Now, normally we don't do a ton of unboxings here at Engadget. There's a lot going on this week due to some fruit company holding a big dev conference, but we still wanted to take some time to check out the latest addition to Microsoft's Surface family, the Surface Laptop Go 2. And this thing is fresh off the mail truck. You hear that? The plastic is still on the box. So without further ado, let's dive in and check it out. So the Surface Laptop Go 2 starts at $600, um, and you get four gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. But today we're gonna be looking at a slightly higher, higher end model, which has eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Now, for those of you who remember the Surface Laptop Go from 2020, the original one, you're gonna notice a lot of design similarities. The design is basically the same, which is just fine by me because you get those really clean surface lines and minimalist design. Now, new for 2020 is this new sage color. Uh, so you still get the sandstone and the blue and the silver model, but this green, it's like kind of pale green one, that's new for this year. All right, so now that we're booted in, you can see we still have a 12.4 inch pixel sense display right here. Though sadly, Microsoft has retained the previous model's 1536 by 1024 resolution, which falls well short of being full HD. So let's go into the display settings and let's check out the advanced display right here, 1536 by 1024 at 60 Hertz. So no high refresh rate um, business like you'd get on a more expensive system. But even though it's not full HD, you know, it looks pretty good. You know, the screen isn't super huge. And so you still get a pretty sharp looking display. I'm not noticing a lot of like, you know, the pixels. I can't see the individual pixels even from like a normal viewing distance. And that's really what you're looking for. So it's still dense enough. So you get a nice sharp looking image, even though it's not full HD resolution. Moving on, uh, there's a front facing 720p camera up here and dual far field mics for handling video calls. But that said, I really wish Microsoft had included a full HD webcam, which I really think should be the bare minimum for every laptop nowadays, regardless of price. And that's especially given the increasing importance of being able to work and attend classes remotely. But let's fire it up and see how it looks. And camera. And you know what? It actually looks pretty good. You can see how it started off and it was a little washed out, but then the auto exposure came in. And honestly, it looks pretty good. You can see there's you know a decent amount of sharpness in my hair. Nothing's too overexposed or underexposed. Um, dynamic range looks okay to me. Um, obviously the resolution is not quite there. Remember this is 720p, but Microsoft has said that there's a new sensor inside that improves things like contrast and color saturation. And it does seem to be working pretty well. I wouldn't have any you know, major complaints in terms of you know, video call quality. And you can see that there's also a little bit of you know, auto tracking, so make sure that your face should stay sharp even if you're moving around a little bit. For the new model, uh, Microsoft says that the Laptop Go has 24% louder speakers, but you're not gonna really notice any obvious speaker grills on the side of the top of the laptop because it's hidden underneath the keyboard. There's also a fingerprint sensor that works with Windows Hello, but keep in mind, there's only, uh, it's only available on the more expensive models. It doesn't come on the $600 base configuration. And let's check out the ports. So for ports, you're not looking, you don't get a ton. You get a single USB-A, a single USB-C, and a headphone jack. And then if I flip it around to the other side, you have your Surface Connect port for charging and docking. Now, here's a fun fact, the uh, cable, let's pull that out. Um, the cable that you plug into the Surface Connect port is also known as the Surflink port, which I just kind of found out recently because I always kind of just called it the Surface Charging Port. So we have the power outlet side and we have the Surflink cable. And one thing I was sort of interested in is making sure, or I wanted to check, if this power brick had a bonus USB-A port for charging, like you get on some more expensive models. You get it on the Surface Studio and some of the Surface Pros, but unfortunately, as you can kind of see right here, you're not, you don't get an extra port for charging peripherals. It would have been really nice given that this thing only has two USB ports to start with, but you know, it's not a deal breaker. 
It is magnetic, so it is nice that way. So even though it is a proprietary port, it does go in pretty smoothly and it's magnetic just like that. Inside, there's an 11th gen Intel Core CPU with Iris XE graphics for all models. Now, I know it seems a bit strange that Microsoft didn't opt for a newer 12th gen chip, but Microsoft says they really wanted to keep price of the base model down, and I suspect going with a slightly older CPU does help with that. I also suspect that the 11th gen CPU helps with battery life too, as 12th gen chips are kind of power hungry, and they have, you know, some heat issues. So going with an 11th gen chip could help that, and also the, the runtime has increased slightly to 13.5 hours, up from 13 hours on the previous model. Now this model has eight gigs of RAM because it's the slightly more high-end version. The base model only comes with four gigs of RAM, so that's really important to know. And it's probably something that I would upgrade if I was gonna use this as my main machine, even though it does make the thing a little bit less affordable. One really welcome upgrade though is the new 128 gig SSD, which now comes standard. That means the 64 gig EMC storage that was available on the previous model is gone forever. And that alone is almost certainly worth the $50 price bump over the original Laptop Go. Unfortunately, if you want a lot of storage, the Laptop Go 2 does top out with a 256 gig SSD. So you're probably gonna have to look into external drives if you want even more storage on the go. Uh, on the inside, uh, there are new fans and improved thermal design for more performance and less noise with Microsoft saying that there's almost a 10 decibel drop at max fan speeds. But you know, we're gonna have to put that through its paces to really see what that difference sounds like. Another small bonus is that the Laptop Go 2 is also more repairable than before. For regular people, Microsoft says that the Laptop Go 2's SSD, Surflink cable, keyboard and trackpad, and even the entire display is replaceable. Okay, so that's about it. Not a ton has changed on the outside, but inside, the Laptop Go 2 has some much needed refreshes. The new 11th gen chip should provide a noticeable boost in performance and an extra half an hour of battery life, which is always nice. I just wish Microsoft had added backlighting to the keyboard, which is another feature I think should be standard on every laptop more than $500. Now, I'm a big proponent of having a desktop at home and a small laptop like this that you can whip out while traveling. And from where I'm sitting, the Surface Laptop Go 2 seems like it could be a really great part of a two-device tandem. Now, when it comes to being your main machine, that's gonna take a little bit more time to figure out how these updated specs really hold up. So, stay tuned for a full review coming soon. And as always, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe for more news, hands-ons, and more from Engadget.